Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am going to make something that I want you to make as well. So I want you to follow along closely as I make this thing because it's one of the things you're going to do on this adventure is construct the same thing I'm constructing, okay? So let's start by putting a point in there. Let's call it F. And we'll say that F has the coordinates, oh, let's say 0, comma, 5, okay? And then we're going to put in a line and we'll call that Y equals negative 5. Okay, so now we have this point here. Now, you know, I'm going to move fast. You may need to have to hit pause from time to time so you can keep up with me. Um, but I want to move fast so I have more time just to spend on explaining what we've got here. So here we go. We have point F at 5, 0, 5, and line Y equals negative 5. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place a point on. I'm going to use this tool, point on objects. On the points menu, point on. And I'm going to place it on point uh, on this line and I'm going to rename that point I want to call it point D okay and I'll explain why later on all right next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a perpendicular line that is going to be perpendicular to the line that we've created but go through point D the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my segment tool I'm going to connect F and D with a segment and now I'm going to find, using my construction menu here, the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So there it is. And then I'm going to use my points menu again, and I'm going to find the intersect tool. And I'm going to find the point where that perpendicular bisector intersects this perpendicular line A. Now what have we created? Well, let's take some of these things off here. Let's take the line away for a minute. Um, all of these lines, in fact, let's take them away. And let's just think about um, this point. Actually, I'll put the, put the perpendicular bisector back there. What we have is we have a segment, and we have a perpendicular bisector uh, to that segment. And so what we know is that the distance between F and A is going to be equal to the distance from F, A and D. That's because this is the perpendicular bisector of a segment, right? This line here bisects perpendicularly this segment. So it has to, every point on it has to be equidistant from F and D. Um, and that was based on our definition of a perpendicular bisector. Now, F and D were, um, you know, F is just a point that was given to us. But D was actually a point on a line, right? It's stuck to that line. And its connection to A is through a perpendicular line. So in other words, A's distance to D is what we would call A's distance to that line, wherever the line point D should go. So if I move D around, it stays again on the line, but um, and A is always perpendicular to it, so A is always measuring the distance from A and that line, you know, because it's it's uh, perpendicular, okay? So let's look at this a different way for a minute. We'll just take this off here, take the segment off, I'll take the line off. What we could do is we could look at this, we've actually created a isosceles triangle, right? An isosceles triangle where this side and this side are congruent okay no matter how I move D we have an isosceles triangle and if you look at the sides that's D1 over here it measures 7.18 you can see right there when I hover over it and F over here also measures at this point 7.18 okay so those two segments they're equidistant they're always going to be equidistant even when I adjust uh, point D okay so now the next thing that we're going to do is we will delete that we don't need that polygon so I'm gonna get rid of that triangle and actually I really don't even need to see F anymore I'm going to um, let's just click there and take it away and I don't need D I want you just to focus on A okay and I'm going to activate A I'm gonna put a tracer on it so we're gonna see where A goes okay Remembering that it is part, it, 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 the only thing that has determined where A is, is that it must be equidistant from this point and that line, okay? And if I, if I animate 
point D so that it moves along the line, okay, let's see what happens to A. So we see that A is all of these points and it's moving along the line and A is goes off and disappears. So A appears to be taking some shape like this and the only thing we know about all these A's is that they are the points that are equidistant from this point F that existed and that line D that existed. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we'll watch it a little bit closer and I want you to recognize the shape here. Watch the shape. You might remember this shape, I hope you do, from Algebra 1 where we learned about quadratic equations and this shape here is called a parabola. Okay, so this is another definition for a parabola. Okay, another definition for a parabola. I'm going to go ahead and I'll let that swing around one more time, but then I'm going to turn the animation off for a second. So here we go, swinging around, and I'm going to take that animation off for a second. Let's put in this definition of a parabola. So a parabola is all the sets of points, or is the set of all the points that are equidistant from a given point called the focus and a given line called the directrix. That's the name of it. Okay, It's a kind of funny and hard to see. Focus and directrix. Now you know why I wanted to call the point F and the point on the line D because it was the point that would um, be used to measure the distance between the, the uh, point P. And point P, I called it P because, oh actually I didn't call it P. I'm going to rename that P because that is, our, um, that is our parabola. So let me rename that point here to point P. Okay. So now we have our parabola. It's all the points that are equidistant from the focus and the directrix. Okay, and the directrix is actually, we see point D is on the directrix, but the directrix was actually y equals negative 5. So if we can, if we know that that's what a parabola is, we can say a little bit more. Let's try, you know, some more information here. So therefore, P is equidistant from F, the focus, right, and D, which is a point perpendicular to P on the directrix. Okay? And that means that PF is equal to PD. That's a big deal. I'm going to do a little math by hand here that you need to understand. Okay, but you need to understand that this distance from PF to PD is equidistant. So I'm going to pause this while I set up my, uh, my um, camera and get some algebra ready for us to work out. So now if you remember right now, we just placed point F at 0, 5. My directrix was a point that was on y equals negative 5. So I asked some value x, which remember I could slide it back and forth so it could stay at any value x really, but the y value was fixed at y equals negative 5. So the, val the coordinates for d was some value x and negative 5. Then the points of the parabola, it happens that the point P was going to match the point D always because I constructed P so that it would be on the perpendicular from X. So it would be always um, the same value as X, uh, the same X value as point D. So they were, they were vertical to one another, if you'll remember. Okay, So their X values were the same. The Y value, remember we swung P and it switched around. It swung crazy like this. So we had you know this changing in the y value it was not fixed at negative five it, you know it just moved up and down so it's some variable amount which we call y now remember the rule we say that pf is equal to pd what we're going to do is we're going to use this we're first going to find what is the measure of pf using the distance formula we say that that pf is equal to 
the difference in the x's. So x of f minus x of p. So here is 0 minus x. And then that's squared, right? That's where that came from. And then y of f minus y of p. So 5 minus y, that's where that comes from. And then, you know, you can work that out and simplify it. If you're good at algebra and you enjoy doing that, you can certainly do that. You can also use a computer algebra system to help you just simplify that. But that's what you're going to get, x squared plus y minus 5 squared. So I use my computer algebra system, and I put that in there. That is my new um, value here, which is, again, x squared plus open parentheses, um, y minus 5, close parentheses, squared. So that's the value of PF. And then I do the same thing with PD. I'll zoom back out just a little bit here. And you can see that PD, I'm just putting in my x values, right, for PD. And they both have x here. So we're going to subtract x's and then you know, negative 5 minus y, which is y of d minus y of p, so negative 5 minus y. We plug that in, and again, you know, so I don't make any mistakes. I'm using my calculator to help me with the algebra, and it tells me that the value of that is the absolute value of y plus 5. So I can put that down here, that I know that the, ab the pd is equal to the absolute value of y plus 5 and that is the value of PD. So now, let's write those in here. PF was, again, simplified to, let me zoom out just a little bit there. PF was simplified to the square root of x squared plus y minus 5 squared. So I put that over here. PF is equal to the square root of x squared plus y minus 5 squared. And PD was equal to the absolute value of Y plus 5. Okay? Now, if I wanted to come up with an equation that represents this parabola here, I'd want to have it, you know, Y equals something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and isolate the Y. I'm going to do some work and try to isolate the Y. Just basic algebra here. I don't like having a square root on this side. So the first thing I'll do is I will square both sides. Okay, so if I take this guy here, well, let's put this down here in parentheses and paste that down there and say, hey, I want to square that. What happens when I square that? Well, it's going to give me that the square root and the square are going to cancel out. So what's left is just what's inside of the, of the radical. When I square this side, it turns into x squared plus y minus 5 squared. What happens when I square the other side? Well, let's get some parentheses and we'll stick the value there in. Say what happens when I square that? Well, now you can see that what it does is it just gets rid of those absolute values. And now we have a binomial expression that needs to be squared, which is y plus 5 squared. So now we don't like these. These terms have to be expanded. You can do that with foiling. Um, you can use what's called an expand command. Okay, so let's do that. Let's expand. So I'm going to go E. Let's see if you can see this. I'm try to zoom in a little bit. Maybe take the light off of that. I don't know. So E, X, P, A, N, D, and put in parentheses. Now what goes in there? For this one, I want to expand that y minus 5. So open parentheses, y minus 5, close parentheses, squared. And it tells me that's equal to y squared minus 10y plus 25. And then I'm going to expand this term as well. Okay, So we're going to e, x, p, a, n, d. We're going to expand, open parentheses, and let's put this guy in there and hit enter and we get y squared plus 10y plus 25. Now if you foil that out you're going to get those things yourself but I didn't want to foil it so I just let the calculator do it for me. Okay, turn that lamp back on a little bit. Let's zoom out a little bit. So now if I've expanded these terms, okay, see if I can zoom out just a tad bit more. 
There we go. All right. So now y plus 5 squared, uh, all of this changed. I still have x squared here because I didn't expand that. But this here turned into y squared minus 10y plus 25. Okay, that's what this foils out to. And over here I get y squared plus 10y plus 25. Okay, oh boy, that's really out of focus. And that's what happened when I expanded this, it turned into that trinomial. When I expanded this, it turned into this trinomial. And of course the x squared was already being added to that. So that's what we have here. So now the next thing I want to do, I want to simplify, right? So for me, the simplest thing to do is to subtract common add-ins. So let's write that down. Subtract common add-ins. Now what's an add-end? An add-end is something that's being added in our equation. So I have y squared is being added here and it's being added there. And I have 25 being added here and there. So I'm going to subtract the common ones and take away 25 from both sides and take away y squared from both sides. And when I simplify that, I end up with x squared minus 10y equals, see this cancels and that cancels now. It's equal to, now this cancels and that cancels, so it's equals to 10y. The next thing I would do is I would add 10y to both sides. And then I should have x squared is equal to 20y. Okay? Unless I've made a mistake here, I sure hope I haven't. We divide by 20 on both sides. And I end up with y is equal to x squared over 20. Another way to put that is 1 20th times x squared equals y. Okay, it's another way to, to write that, right? So now I have a parabola, right? Y equals ax squared plus bx, where b would be 0, plus c, where c is 0. So let's try plugging that into our geogebra here, and let's see what happens with that equation. If I go y equals 1 over 20th, 1 over 20 times x squared. Okay, so that's 1 20th, right? You can see it down here, 1 20th times x squared. And we hit enter. Now it shows up here, it changed 1 20th to 0 0.05, but that is 1 20th. And here's our, it says conic, but it's a y equals 0 0.05 x squared, the same thing as 1 20th. And we see the parabola exists, and sure enough, we have developed the parabola where all of those points lie. And if I were to grab and move point D, it is going to always be on that parabola. Hey, that's pretty cool. So in other words, if somebody told me that I needed to place, I needed to find the equation for the line that was placed at uh, focus, I'm sorry, if I need to find the equation for the parabola with a focus at y or 0, 5 and directrix at y equals negative 5, I could think through how to do that using this parabola machine and then use the algebra to derive the equation. So that's what I'm going to have you do. You're going to construct the parabola machine. I want you to select a different focus, okay? My advice is that you select a focus on the y-axis. That makes it pretty simple. But I don't want it at 5. Put it at 7 or 3 or something else. And then create a directrix. And my advice, again, is create one that is horizontal to the x-axis, okay? And I just don't want it to be y equals negative 5. You could make it y equals negative 3, y equals negative 7, whatever it is that you want. Uh, my advice to you is that you consider that your focus and your directrix be equidistant from the origin. Okay, So that here I am at 0, 5 and my um, directrix was at y equals negative 5. That way I made sure they would be equidistant. But it doesn't have to be. You're going to pick that point. You're going to construct your own parabola machine and publish it on GeogebraTube. Put that in your live binder. 
right? And so you have that work there. Then work through the equation like I have, showing your algebra, and publish that, that equation by taking a picture of your work and uh, making a move note out of it where you explain how you did the calculations. I don't care if you want to show or explain that you did them using GeoGebra, but you're going to explain the calculations. And then finally, you're going to make sure that you've graphed your final equation and that it's showing on your parabola, on your, um, sorry, your GeoGebra tube that you've shared. Okay, that's the work for this uh, adventure. Good luck.